Hey everyone, thanks so much for tuning in. One of the questions that I get asked a lot is, Mr. Epic Snuggle Bunny, what are some of your grails? And a lot of the times I respond that I don't have any grails, and you know, for the most part I don't, but when I really think about it, there are actually two models and two very specific knives that I would count as personal grails for me. And I'm very fortunate to have both of them uh, right in front of me at this time for a video. Um, so these are on loan from my friend CJ. His name is Blitz310 on Instagram. Um, I'll put a link to his Instagram account in the description box below if you guys want to go check out his amazing collection. But he was kind enough to loan me these two knives, and they've been here for way longer than they should have, so I definitely need to get these back to him. Um, but we're going to look at some custom knives from knife maker Derek Monroe of Monroe Knives. And we have the Sigil MK4. And this is, a again, a custom knife. There's a production version out there that we'll talk about. And then this is the Cypher. Um, again, also a custom knife from Derek Monroe. Um, we'll talk about the production version of this one later as well. So these are, again, two very incredible pieces. The, what makes them grails for me is, of course, going to be um, exclusivity. Um, Derek does not make a lot of knives, and these are the two best examples of each that I have ever seen, hands down, bar none. Um, so Derek Monroe, he's been making custom knives full-time since 1997. Um, you know, there's really not a lot of info out there about him. I tried to get in contact with him, but it was unable to. He does do two shows that I know for sure, perhaps more, um, but the USN show that's in Vegas and also TKI that's in Vegas. So, um, or at least he's done those in the past. Um, but, you know, his, his knives, even when he makes them, they're quite hard to come by. Um, he has a sub form on the USN knife form, um, and that is probably the best place to, um, I guess, kind of get in on potentially a drop or see what he's working on or keep up with his work. Um, he posts the Instagram mildly and frequently. So, all right. Um, I don't want to talk too much. Let's go in and show you guys these pieces. So as far as kind of basic specs on this one, just for the sake of specs, blade length is about 3.5 inches. Handle length is 4.4 and it does weigh in at 4.11 ounces. So, yeah, kind of a modified Warncliffe drop point here. This one's done in Damasteel. Beautiful blade, beautiful blade shape, very functional blade shape, and uh, just the right amount of jimping hair on top, a small, almost finger trail of sorts or sharpening notch, depending on your hand size, but um, beautifully finished damas steel. Love the etch that he did. I think he did a fantastic job. So, flipper tab is marvelously executed, and the action is incredible. So, amazing, amazing action. Let's take a look at the pivot here. Damas steel pivot collar with a custom pivot that he made, and you guys can see what I believe is copper inlaid throughout. Show side, and here's the back side, the lock side of this pivot. Captured, obviously, but um, beautiful custom-made pivots. As far as I understand, um, no CNC in his shop, all handmade, which, again, is just absolutely incredible. I mean, Derek really does embody um, functional art um, to an incredible degree. I mean, look at all the machine work and the milling on this knife. And it, it does have, you know, tactile benefits, but, um, you know, it's art that does not take away from the functionality of the knife. Um, you know, as, as beautiful as this piece is, this is something that you could carry and not really worry about having to damage um, more copper inlays throughout the handle. Again, beautifully done. Let's look at all the millwork throughout. Also a damask steel backspacer that matches the blade and little bronze or copper spacers that obviously space it functionally, but also a nice little pop of color. So, lanyard hole. 
Um, if I had one complaint, it would just be that, you know, again, this pocket clip isn't terribly functional. Um, I don't know that someone would carry this knife, but, you know, you certainly could. Again, it's, it's got that user finish to it. Nice little jimpy here on the pocket clip for extraction. Nice detail. Again, just insane milling throughout. This one has a stainless steel lock insert. Um, I believe only the MK4s did. His prior versions, the MK1, 2, and 3, I don't think they did, but, you know, don't quote me on that, so... Lock up. Um, love, love, love the um, texturing he added to the lock bar here on both sides. Makes it easy to get in there, and then it gives you a really nice spot to disengage that's comfortable and almost slip proof. So that's fantastic. Um, another knife that has done this well would be like the Shergor of 111, but yeah, Derek's work is impeccable. So internal skeletonizing throughout. Um, really cool way that he essentially milled out the lock bar here. And you guys can see the skeletonizing hopefully. So another look at the action. Whew. Really, really good. Ergonomically, um, this thing this fits in the hand marvelously. Four finger grip, thumb comes up on the top of the blade. So Yeah, very well balanced, very comfortable, great action. I mean, everything is absolutely perfect on this knife. So, um, again, I, I love the MK4 as a design, and this one specifically is the best material combo, the best detail work, um, just, just flawless. This one is flawless, so love it, love it, love it. It has an interesting story as, how, as far as how CJ got his hands on it. I don't remember the details, but... Um, yeah, so it was, it was an interesting story. So um, that is the Sigil MK4. Let's take a look at the Cypher here. And again, these two are almost a, kind of a matching set, if you will. Um, both have the same finish on the handles to a degree. They both have damascus steel blades. Um, but I don't know. I think it's a matching set. So this is the Cypher. Obviously a very long, slender knife. Um, this one has a 3.6 inch blade with a 4.6 inch handle, so um, really nice blade to handle ratio. Beautiful damas steel. Nice plunge line in line with the frame. Look at the uh, flipper tab, the way that he's kind of skeletonized it. Again, it, artistic detail. Not necessarily functional per se, but it's it's a nice visual element. So this one does have a pearl pivot, and look at this custom pivot. Absolutely incredible machining. And again, no CNC as far as I'm aware. All done by hand, but it looks like a deck of cards that's kind of being you know fanned out. Incredible. Actually, show you guys the jimping up top here. Very functional. It's fantastic. Low profile flipper tab with just the right amount of jimping, so this works very, very well. I mean, it's stunning design again. Visually, um, in the hand, it's it's very comfortable. It's very functional. It carries in the pocket very well. Uh, one thing is this pocket clip is actually better, assuming that you wanted to carry it. So. I don't want to scratch these two, but you guys can see the difference in the gap there. Um, I know that CJ got this one. It was a silent bit, I think, at TKI last year or the year before, but um, yeah. Very smooth. Very nice action. Let's look at the rest of the handle here. I don't know if that's pearl as well for the backspacer. Um, I have no idea. Might just be titanium. Um, I don't know. Couldn't get too many details, but this is pearl here on the back side of the pivot, so it's inlaid. Hopefully the camera, the lighting is doing that justice, but front side, 
back side. Look how thin the lock bar cutout is. Must be a wire EDM. It's super clean, super thin. Again, stainless steel lock insert. Perfect blade to handle ratio. <sighs> Killer work. Killer work. Um, just, man, they're just so fantastic in so many regards. Uh, visually, aesthetically, functionally, ergonomically, um, I mean, just in every regard. So, you know, these are both definitely out of my reach as far as availability, as far as price goes, way outside my comfort zone, and that's totally fine. Um, it's It's been incredible to, you know, be able to check these out for long term. I've definitely handled both of these at um, perhaps the USN show before or on, uh, on some other occasions. I've known CJ for a few years, so... You know, it's. I was really kind of, I don't know, uh, shocked when I posted pictures of these knives, and people thought that these were um, one. They had no idea who they, who these were made by, or what they were. Or when people thought that these were the production versions of these knives. So there are some production versions, kind of, sort of, of these knives. Um, Derek partnered with Microtech some years ago. Microtech came out with a sigil. Um, it was, as I recall, larger than this one, and I handled maybe six of them. Every single one had some sort of problem. Gritty action, uh, blade play, uh, sticky locks, even though it had a lock bar insert. I was um, very, very disappointed with the overall execution of the knives, and I think upscaling the size was, was not a good move because this is a fantastic size. Um, it, it just, it's perfect the way that it is. So I had friends that went out and bought two of them. And again, everyone I know had problems with the production versions, which was really sad because it, it's doing a disservice to this design. So my hope is since the design is on lockdown with Microtech, that they will create a version two at some point that is true to the size. And I hope they do a much better job with the fit and finish because I think that this design deserves it. It's it's an amazing design. So that's a hope. That's a dream. We'll see if it ever happens. Um, so again, this is the custom. The production version is from Microtech based on these, um, also called the Sigil. So I don't know if they're still in production. They were for a few years and yeah. And if you got one from Microtech that was perfect, awesome. Really glad to hear it. Um, that was certainly not my experience with six different knives. Uh, which, again, is unfortunate. Now, there is a production-ish version of this one. Um, obviously, this is a manual flipper folder knife. Um, the Microtech has done an OTF, an out-the-front automatic, as far as I'm aware, with this model. So, you know, again, it'll have a similar, you know, handle milling and so forth, but it is an out-the-front. Would I like to see Microtech do a Again, a production version true to this one where they just really kill it on the fit and finish. Absolutely. I think this is also an amazing design. So, you know, again, those are those are my my wishes or my hopes and dreams that, uh, you know, that that some really true to the custom production versions will come out at some point. So anyways, um, I'll put pertinent links down in the description box below. Uh, for Derek Monroe, his Instagram and his website. Um, I hope that you guys enjoy taking a look at these. I hope that you appreciate them as much as I do for um, the incredible custom knives that they are. And thanks so much for watching, guys. More videos to come. You can also follow me on Instagram as Epic Snuggle Bunny. Take care.